Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky of thelandgeek.com and frontierpropertiesusa.com. And I'm really excited. This is my first attempt at podcasting, and I've got with me, hopefully, I'm going to make him commit to this, my regular partner on this podcast, Joran Frazier of Reserve Land Management. His website's reserveland.com. And Joran and I got in this business together in 2001, and we're going to talk about our stories in just a second, but I do want to introduce Duran properly because just to pigeonhole him as a land guy would be incorrect. He is a serial entrepreneur, and his story is fascinating because he got started when he was 21 years old, and uh, so he's six years younger than me. Um, it, it, it's just incredible. So, Duran, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing great. You know, I'm really upset that I missed your 40th birthday, Mark. I didn't even realize you turned 40, so congratulations, you old man. That's because I'm completely ignoring the fact that I'm now 41. I'm just going to start doing counting backwards now. But <laughs> look, we all can't be as young and as good looking as you, Duran. It's pretty hard. Let me tell you, it's pretty hard uh, bald, <laughs> going, going bald and gray at 35. But uh, I will say that I... Uh, What's brought me here to today, all the fun, enjoyment, and uh, everything else that goes along with uh, being a serial entrepreneur, um, I, I'll take it. I'll take the bald hair. I'll take the, the, uh, the, gray, the gray beard and the gray hair that I'm starting to see. I, it really makes me sad. But anyway, yeah, I, uh, I, I do have a, a pretty cool little backstory, but uh, it, it wouldn't be the same as if I didn't have you, buddy. So um, you want to talk a little bit about, about the story or you want to uh, you go into some other details? Yeah, I mean, you know... Look, tell, tell us how you started from this 21-year-old punk kid who knew nothing about real estate, and now you're living off the ocean in Carlsbad, and uh, you work at land six hours a week? Is that what you told me? Yeah, you know, that's kind of, that may be pushing a little bit. I, I may be exaggerating a little bit, maybe a little bit more like five hours a week. But <clears throat> yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I got into the land business at uh, the, the ripe age of 21 years old. Uh, my grandfather gave me a a quick claim deed to a piece of land that he thought was worthless and he had traded gemstones for in the 1970s in a little town, outside a little town called Taos, New Mexico. Uh, at, at, that, at that ripe age of 21, I thought Taos, New Mexico was actually uh, the country of Mexico. I wasn't quite sure. Uh, geographically, I wasn't uh, very, very intelligent at that point in time. So I didn't know what to do with this piece of land. I decided, you know what, uh, if, if, uh, if I could sell this thing, maybe I could put a little money in the bank and you know, continue my dream of trying to be a uh, professional surfer, which at that point in time, I was already, um, I didn't have the athletic ability to barely stand up on a board, but I had dreams. Um, so anyway, I took, uh, took the piece of land, went on eBay, sold this piece of land, and, and uh, and eight hundred dollars later, I thought I was uh, I was Donald Trump. So, so I eight hundred dollars on your first transaction. Correct, correct. I, and I didn't even know. I, to be honest with you, it's hilarious. Cause I didn't know what to do uh, with the with the deed. I had no clue how to transfer the sale. I I just was like, well, eight hundred bucks sounded awesome. I'll figure it out. So um, now, had I gone back to my grandfather and told him I sold this piece of land, I made eight hundred bucks. He'd probably make me give him seven hundred ninety five back. Um, <laughs> just. Just because I know how cheap my grandfather is, so um, but you know nothing, nothing, uh, nothing bad to say about him. But it, he was just he, that's just the way he rolled, and and uh, there was nothing wrong with that. So I um, so yeah, I took the first piece of land, I I sold it, and then my next question was, which kind of leads me to like you know how do you become an entrepreneur? What you know the mindset of an entrepreneur? You you kind of open your brain a little bit, get creative, and go what? How do I do it again? What's next? And so I decided to research this and find out exactly uh, where this place was because obviously I hadn't been there. Um, I spotted out on a map, uh, you know, after, probably after I sold it. And, uh, and then I realized, hey, I need to get back out there and see if I can find some more. So it just so happened that three months later was the next auction. Um, so I took my $800 and I borrowed 500 from my mom and 500 from my sister. I uh, promised them both a 35% return on investment after six weeks. That's, um, that's which, very generous. Yeah, they, were, they actually thought uh, – they they knew they had written that money off, but I you know, 
for me, I thought there's, you know, there's a chance this could happen. You know, it was slight, but it was a slim chance, but I figured that we could do something with it. So take my $1,800 to, uh, you know, jump on my Southwest plane to Albuquerque, take the drive up there, have no clue what I'm in for, um, get the auction. And I noticed there's about seven or eight people that don't belong there. Um, and I just, it just didn't feel right. I go, gosh, where, where are these people coming from? They don't look like they're from Taos, New Mexico. So at, at the, they, it was a two day auction at lunchtime. We all go out and we, we, I, I go out and me being sort of a, you know, obviously, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, introvert. Uh, I went and said, let's go do some lunch guys. Let's all chat and see what's going on. And so I, I sit down and I happen to sit down with five other people that are doing eBay auctions and they are all pretty pretty wealthy people that are doing well in the in this business and they had just all sort of started at the same time except for they had already been to four or five or six different auctions together so uh so we all just co- sort of chatted to see what you know what was going on and you know lo and behold we all made friends and to this day most of them are still friends of mine which is pretty crazy it's almost been you know whatever 14 or 15 years later so uh it's interesting for me to you know to look back on that but in, in any case it, i picked up about five or six parcels at this auction um, and I ended up selling them for probably between six and eight thousand. I don't recall the total number, um, but of course, y- y- you can figure out return wise, it was pretty good. It was a huge return. Yeah, and you and I met at that my first auction, which was in Denning, New Mexico, and I that I had three thousand dollars. And I, I mean, I was freaking out. I remember telling my wife that uh, I was going to do this, and I'm going to try to buy land. And she's like, and at this time I was doing investment banking. I was doing mergers and acquisitions with this little boutique firm that I was completely miserable uh, with. And uh, at that time, so, but my, you know, a buddy of mine said, hey, you know, come do this with me. And he had been doing really well. So uh, I remember going and I'm, I'm freaking out. I don't know what I'm doing. And I bought, I think, 10 pieces at that, at that auction at, an average price of a of a hundred dollars, and I remember making and I had like or something like that, and I remember s- spending all three thousand. I forgot what it was, but you know, and then I made like a three hundred percent return on that auction. And then the next one was Arizona, in southern Arizona. You and I went to that one, and we you and I we picked up property for like a dollar and five dollars, and I remember that was the big auction. Where I think I spent all the money I made on Deming, and uh, ended up making over ninety thousand dollars over the next six months, which allowed me to really think about quitting my job. I quit my job eighteen months after that, um, and it was it, it was just phenomenal. So this business is weird. It's a it's this niche. It's land. It's not houses. It's not flipping houses. And you've been involved in a lot of different businesses. Um, but why do you like land so much? Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where looking, looking at land from a creative aspect on a sales side, marketing side, acquisition side, what, what can I buy? Where can I buy it? Um, the unique part about owning a piece of land compared to a piece of paper. There's just so much more intrigue in, in stepping on a piece of land and saying, this is my land. So, you know, it, it, you know, going back to that, that Arizona auction you were talking about, I had one of those auctions p- prior to it. it. It was a Valencia County auction where I actually had an average uh, purchase price, I think, was $33 a lot and sale price of $1,000 a lot. And I think that was kind of my catapult. So Arizona was a great auction for me, but I th- actually think the Valencia auction for me was uh, enormous. I think I spent about... Uh, three or four thousand, maybe five thousand at that auction, and I think I made a a, per, a return in like maybe twelve weeks of about sixty to seventy thousand dollars. So it was it was big, and you know those those numbers uh you know don't, don't reflect what's going to happen on your everyday uh you know occurrence at an auction. Right, but, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, you should be listening to this and expecting, oh, I'm going to go to an auction tomorrow and and make these kinds of returns. I mean, this is this was back when no one knew about this before uh you know John Beck started doing infomercials late at night telling people how to, how to go to these auctions. So it's, it's a much more complex business now because you really have to diversify as far as getting deal flow. It can't just be tax auctions anymore. Uh, I do a letter campaign. I do bulk sales with um, distressed individuals and companies. So it's much more involved now than what it was when we got started. But it's much more exciting because – Duran and I have already made all the mistakes and can really help other people now avoid those mistakes. And, 
you know, it's really gotten down to where we have it systematized. And I think that's what this podcast is going to be about is that, you know, the bottom line is, you, you know, I started with $3,000. Duran started with a piece of property. And really that gave him like $800 to play with. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to start buying and selling raw land. You really just need a little bit of knowledge and uh, courage, really, to go out and, and do it. Would, would you agree? A hundred percent, Mark. A hundred percent. I think I think that's where people need to realize that that and 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 the difference between two thousand two thousand and two thousand and one and two thousand and thirteen is um, there are so many more advantages in the terms of the internet in terms of how to market your land that we didn't have back then. We only had one place to go, and that was eBay. Right uh, now, now these now these sellers can go anywhere and market, um, and they can still use uh, you know direct marketing campaigns. There's so many there's so many ways to market now. Uh, that that it gives the the seller an upper hand. Oh yeah, I mean the analytics now are crazy. I mean I can go on a website now and I can say I want males who have uh, income of you know sixty to one hundred twenty thousand dollars. They subscribe to these magazines, which are typically outdoor magazines. You know maybe they like uh, you know something that has to do with raw land. Like I already know so much about them, and I can just send a direct marketing piece to them very easily and I know okay I'm gonna get this many sales out of this one marketing piece it's it's tremendous what what technology can do for your business today and um, we're gonna talk uh, in the next few one months and weeks uh, weekly about you know how we do this and our systems and and, uh, and why we love land so much I love land so much because I feel like I can't lose and that's what I told my wife was like, even if I can't sell the property, I own land. I have an asset. And from an investment banking standpoint, which I came from, I saw that most companies are run by management for management. They're not running these companies for the investors. So if you buy a stock, you have no idea what management's doing. I mean, if I buy Apple Computer tomorrow, yeah, I like the iPhone. I like Macs. I like them, but I don't know how they're running their business. I don't know what their strategy is. And honestly, their financials are so complicated now, I can't even understand it. But a piece of land is very simple to understand, and I can control every aspect of it. I can improve it. I can change the zoning. I can build on it. Uh, or I can you know, just use it recreationally. And uh, it's, it's great. I mean, what, what do you think, Duran? Stock market? Or, or real estate. Yeah, you know, I put all my all my marbles in the stock market because I believe truly that you know, like throwing darts at a dartboard, eventually, <laughs> eventually something's just going to pop, and I'm going to be a gazillionaire. No, I, 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 with you, Mark. I totally, um, I totally believe that the stock market is manipulated. I mean, let's 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 be honest with you. They've created these algorithms. The banks create these algorithms uh, that are that are a mill a millisecond faster than the average investor, and they'll they'll make you know a quarter of a penny on a on a particular stock. And and make these you know trades of you know five ten million shares and, and make money when the average investor can't make a dime and again it all comes down to control what control do you have of the stock what control do you have of your land so for me it's control it's complete control of, of everything the control that I, I I make just like you Mark I make the decisions when I get to hang out with my family I love the fact that I can wake up in the morning and I don't have to go into an office with a bunch of employees and and, and listen to a boss or or even sometimes be the boss I mean I have employees but I'm, when I when I talk to my employees, they respect me, and I write their paychecks. But at the same time, it's a friend it's a friend friend relationship. We're all in a fun environment. We're talking about land, so it's really neat to be able to talk about and work with land and not have to deal with with something we can't control. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I mean, I I love our lifestyle. I work. I have an office. I don't work out of the house. I used to work out of the house. I have three kids, and they've gotten to the point now. They're just they're too loud. Duran's so much younger than me. He's got two young boys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, the, the lifestyle is phenomenal because you can do this from a computer. You don't have to travel. And you can decide when you work, how you work, where you work. And let's get back to that that five hours a week thing. I know the Tim Ferriss book, The 4-Hour Work Week. You're really living this 4-Hour this Work Week thing. How are you doing it? First of all, let's go back to Mr. Ferris. I, I, nothing, nothing bad about Mr. Ferris, but I'm pretty sure that he made his money by writing a book. He didn't really have a four-hour <laughs> that, work. That's true. 
<laughs> so, he's, he's, he is the best uh, self promoter out there. You, yep, you got to respect the guy. He's amazing. He should actually change his name of his book to Four Hour Self Promoter. Um, anyway, I, I I didn't spend a whole lot of time in the college days going to college. Um, we had a school right on the ocean. I went to college at a little small college in, in uh, San Diego called Point Loma. And we call it surf school, not college, because basically we would basically get up every morning and check the surf, and it was good. We'd skip class. It was that simple. So I and I really, for whatever reason, didn't want to go to. school. I didn't feel like I needed school. And I and I look back and go, man, you know, the education was great, but I felt like it was always thirteenth grade. I felt like I was learning something that, you know, was was one degree from from my senior year in high school that gosh, it just didn't make sense to me. So I always wanted to work for myself. I knew I did, and at 19, 20, 21, when you're trying to figure it out, it's hard. And you know, as a young boy, I had to work because my mom uh, didn't have any money, so I'd, w- I'd wake up at 4 in the morning, had a paper route, and I remember, I remember every morning I'd take $5, and I'd put it on my mom's counter and say, here you go, mom, this is for lunch. And it was such a neat feeling to know that I'm helping my mom, and then I understand the value of money. And That's it's sort of sweet. like it's, it's not a position you, you – you're, I mean, you're put there, uh, and it's just a circumstance you have to deal with in life. And so for me – I, I, come, I come to that transition at 19, 20, 21 and go, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? And I always had a plan of working smart and not hard. Uh, and, and obviously the internet gave us that, you know, that platform to do that. So I, I came out of college. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew if I could figure out the sweet spot, which you know, wh- whether I put myself in that position, I, I always say I'm blessed to be where I'm at. So I don't think I put myself there, but that option was given to me and I just kind of went after it. But, um, but as an entrepreneur, you go after these, these, these ideas and you chase them and you, and you try to work efficiently and smart and not hard. And then if you're working five hours a week and you're making good money, uh, that's just the way it is that you don't, you, you, you try, you try to keep that lifestyle. And I was able to do it for, gosh, I don't know how many years, six, six to eight years. And then I started getting, I, I had that, I've always had a passion to, to get involved in the startup community and here in San Diego, I've done that. So I, I work a lot more than five hours a week, but on land itself, I'm still a, probably about a five to six hour a week guy. Yeah. And, and the reason you can do that and the reason, um, you know, our lifestyle is, is so amazing now is because we, we built up enough of a, of a cash base by buying and flipping raw land that then we started buying property that we could sell on land contracts, and now we're getting passive income in every single month, which is kind of the insurance uh, method. Nothing's better than insurance because you don't even have to buy a piece of physical inventory, but nobody wants to talk about insurance. (laughs) We all need it, but uh, it's not as fun as buying land, but you can buy a piece of land, you sell it one time, and then get monthly payments. And it's not like... Uh, with a rental house where they're calling you at two in the morning, I've got termites, the toilet's out, the roof is leaking, and it becomes this huge maintenance headache. Raw land needs no maintenance. And uh, it, because of that, you have this passive income coming in, and as a result, it affords an, a tremendous lifestyle. Once you get to that point, that critical point where the income coming in passively exceeds your monthly expenses. And once you hit that point, I mean, there's there's really nothing better. Yeah, you you're, you nailed it, Mark. I mean, passive income is uh, we all we all dream of it, and some 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 people dream uh, that a multi level marketing uh, campaign is going to take them there. Unfortunately, we don't uh, agree with that. But hey, that's that's uh, to each their own. <laughs> but but there are, I mean, a, a, you know, an ethical idea of passive income in my mind and I'm not putting down any MLMs because there are some that are okay out there but I just it gives everyone the false impression that money can be made easily and passively um, with land you don't have to screw your friend to make money right. uh, you, you just give you them just, an asset right exactly so uh, you you nailed it I mean it's just the life the, the ability to, to wake up in the morning go you know get your mail in your mailbox open up and realize there's there's a couple of checks there that uh, that you received and you're on a you know a ten year note and that you can simply take your iPhone and take a picture of this check and there you go. I mean you literally don't have to leave your house anymore. You can sell land on the internet. You may, I mean of course when you buy the land you have to be there and take some pictures, make it look good. But but you when you, when when the time comes and you're getting those checks and you're a year into it, you realize, gosh, I spent one day, two days to buy this land. Maybe maybe a week to put the marketing campaign together, maybe a month to sell it, and then boom, ten years you got a check every single month. It's just it's it's flawless. It's a flawless concept. 
I, yeah, I agree. I agree. So let me ask you this. If you could do it all over again, you're 21. Is there anything you would have changed? Uh, no, you know what? I, looking back, I don't think so. I, I actually, at the entire road, the entire journey of land has been so amazing. I mean, gosh, from, from 21 at buying a, a, a lot in Taos, New Mexico, to, to our, our acquisition of 40,000 acres that we made uh, at, when I was 25. Yeah, taking, that was a big taking, deal. Well, we should talk about that in another podcast and break that down, the, yep. the Nevada acquisition. Yeah, that that would be an interesting conversation. But you know, it's all it's all about taking risks. It's all about forward thinking and the mindset that that you can do anything you put your 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 mind to. You just you just need to take some risks. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, if you're risk, I mean, and the thing is, I'm very risk averse, um, more much more than I think you are. Uh, I'm very conservative, very risk averse. Yet somehow, I have no problem buying a piece of land because when I'm buying it, I know. You know the old adage in real estate: you make money on the buy, not the sell. So if I'm not, if I know I'm buying an asset, thirty cents on the dollar, forty cents on the dollar, well, wh- where's the risk in that? And then the fact that okay, what if I can't sell it? And let me be clear: in in twelve years, I've lost money on only one parcel of land out of I think five thousand deals that I've done. I've lost money on one. So. I've gotten really, really good at this. Mark, you're, you're lucky. I, I actually had uh, – I, I haven't had any losers, but what I do is if I know I have a loser, I don't sell it. So I can't say that, that I have a loss to this day, and I've, we've probably done about the same amount of transactions. But I, I, I do have one that I – and I have to – this is a funny story, but I did have one that I accidentally bought. I didn't do my research, and it was underwater. And so I just didn't want to sell it because I felt so what, bad. What, what do you mean it was underwater? Well, I bought some property. I went to an Imperial County auction in California. Right. I didn't do, I, and I, I was not paying attention, which again, if you get in this business, you got to pay attention. Attention yeah. to detail is very important. Yeah, you know, you know what our podcast, our next podcast should be is on due diligence. Just yes. due diligence. Yes, because if you don't follow a strategy or a structure, you're in trouble. But I remember going to this auction. It was my, probably my 10th auction, 11th auction. Show up. And they they had the they had the list of uh, redemptions on uh, you know where they they cut the you know the uh, the no- auction number out of the uh, list and I'm not paying attention and next thing you know I have my hand up I'm buying this property no one's bidding against me I'm I'm going what the heck's going on this is amazing and I go to the county office realize what I buy and I find out this this piece of property is underwater well I still pay the property taxes each each year it's not a lot of money um, I and I did spend some money on this property but I realized that. It's not a loser if I still own it. So, right, right. Are, you, are you going to improve it? Maybe, if, maybe improve it, and then it'll it'll have more value. Yeah, I did. I put a houseboat out there with an anchor, and uh, so it it is completely livable. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, Mark. I would never do something like that. Right. Um, no, I I can't I can't um, subject myself to losing on any land deal. So yes, to this day, in 12 or 13 years, I've never lost a land deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's a cra- pretty crazy thing. So, all right, I think we should do a tip of the day and give people out there uh, some type of tip or website they can go to to learn more about land or how we do this. So what's what's your tip of the day? I know I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. You may not have even thought about it, but what do you got? Two of my my, my favorite websites. One, just to kind of keep me updated on what's going on auction-wise, uh, taxsalelists.com. Taxsalelists.com. Is that yep. John Lane's site? I have no clue. I don't even. I, I don't pay attention to whose site it is. All I use it for is a map to click on and find out when the auctions are coming because that, that site is helpful in knowing what's coming up. But right. you, you need to do a lot more due diligence. They don't really offer that on the site, um, which they, they should, but they don't. Um, and they do offer like an extended package and not all the auctions do. But if you go to the county website, generally you can get more information uh, on the auction itself. So from there, I go directly to a county auction website and then do my do my due diligence from there. Um, and then one other site that I like a lot that I just kind of go to because I'm a kind of an off-grid guy um, when there's a chance is, is off-grid.net. Uh, one of my other favorite little sites is always – some good reading to do, you know, what, what, what you can do with the property and its highest and best use and, you know, take, take a property and, and whether you put solar panels on it or, you know, we, we can go in that in, in another uh, podcast, but I, I, I love that website. So take a peek at that website and uh, you'll probably get it's some really good It's just offgrid.net. 
off, off grid is one off, word. No, off off dash grid dot net. Oh, off dash grid dot net. Got yep. it. Yep. Okay. I you know I've been on that site. It's it's amazing what you can do now on on raw land and how you can live off the grid. We're, we're getting to the point where you can pretty much do anything anywhere where, you know, there's no such thing as a, as a bad pre- piece of property if you can access it because you can you can be there. It just takes, a, you know, somebody equipped and with the no- right knowledge. All right. So I've got I've got two websites, too, that I'm going to recommend. So taxsalelists.com is a great start to find out uh, where the auctions are. I like that. Uh, li- I like that site. But. You know, they, they upcharge you for the actual tax sale list. So I go to NACO.org, N-A-C-O, NACO.org, and that has a list of all the counties and the email addresses and all the contact information for every county in the, in the country. Um, and you can quickly call the county treasurer directly or get to their website or email them and get the tax sale list, usually much cheaper or for free than you can at taxsalelists.com. Uh, and then the other website I want to recommend is a website to uh, monitor pricing on eBay. So when we go to an auction, how do we know we're buying property 30 cents on the dollar? Well, we got to know what it's selling for first. And the way I do that is with a program called Terapeak, T-E-R-A-P-E-A-K.com. And it'll you do a quick search. And you can see, okay, five acres, uh, Taos, New Mexico. It'll show me the past sales for the last 90 days. And I can say, okay, this is this is the floor on this property. And in, uh, so if they're all selling for $1,000 on eBay, I can probably get $2,000 or more um, marketing on other sites. I can get a lot more if I do a direct marketing campaign. But now I know, okay, if $1,000 is the floor on, on eBay, then I'm going to go and I'm not going to bid any more than, say, $300 at the auction. If the uh, minimum bid start at $50, I know what I can go up to. So I want to thank everybody for uh, taking the time and listening to our first podcast. I'm sure as we continue to do this, it's going to get a lot better. But I want to thank Duran. You can learn more about Duran at his website at reserveland.com. Duran, you got anything else you want to plug before we Uh, uh, hang up? No, I mean, I just, you know, I thank you all for listening. We, Mark and I have had a uh, really neat journey together, and we, we look forward to chatting more about it with you guys uh, over the next coming weeks. All right. Thanks, Dran. So I'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this next week then. Sounds good, Mark. We'll see you soon. All right. And if everybody wants to learn more about me, go to my website, thelandgeek.com, and you can always uh, get some more information there. And you can also check out my other website where we uh, buy and sell land, which is FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And uh, this is Mark and Duran saying, get back to work. Go out there and buy an asset, pennies on the dollar, and uh, make your life extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.